Hi everyone. Uh, today's webinar topic is about planning the API journey with lifecycle management, which is the second webinar out of series of API management uh, webinars started for this year. So during this webinar, we will discuss on the importance of having proper lifecycle management for an API and we will walk through a demonstration on that aspect with our WSO2 API manager as well. I am Lalaji Sureshika, an Associate Technical Lead uh, who is uh, collaboratively working with uh, API Manager product and my colleague Chamila, a software engineer, will also join today for this webinar. So let's What's an API? API is the term for application program interface. If you have a smartphone, you are well known with what applications are. The tools, games, social networks and other software that we use every day in mobile phones. Programming is how engineers create all the software that make our lives so much easier. An interface is a common boundary shared by two applications or programs that allow both to communicate with one another. So an API is essentially a way for programmers to communicate with a certain application. In other words, an API is a specification or contract written by providers of a service that programmers, for example, application developers must follow when using that service. It describes what functionality is available, how it must be used and what formats it will accept as input or return as output. Every time you want to access a set of data from an application, you have to call the API. But there is only a certain amount of data the application will let you access. So you have to communicate to the operator in a very specific language, a language unique to each application. So let's take a real world example. As most of you are familiar, when browsing Facebook through your smartphone, did you aware that you have already used APIs without uh, knowledge? In Facebook mobile apps, what's happening is data will be collaborated between Facebook's infrastructure and client applications through well-defined APIs. To help visualize this concept, Imagine an API as the middleman between the Facebook infrastructure and an application. This middleman accepts requests and if that request is allowed, returns the data from the Facebook. The middleman also informs Facebook about everything they can request, exactly how to ask for it and how to receive it. The current trend of software industry is exposing set of organizational services as APIs to public. This way the service consumers will be grown and the revenue for the company also will be increased. But before exposing an API, it has to make as a well-managed API with proper security throttling mechanism. Let's try to understand the advantages of such well-managed API, in other words, a good API. From API provider's perspective, it will increase the interest of the company products and services across different consumers. And this will lead on increase in the web traffic for company web services and the revenue uh, will also have a high positive impact on this. Additionally, it will bring a wide opportunity to build the company brand through a popular API. For API consumers perspective, they will get an opportunity to build software with integrating different useful infrastructures and services. And also they could customize the data transfer through API. To have a good API, it's essential to have a proper RESTful design and implementation, which is intuitive, consistent, 
and very secure. And also, it's very important to manage the API lifecycle properly. To compete successfully and thrive today, enterprises across every industry need to transform. This process is not just about incre incremental improvement, but about evolving core businesses to meet the demands of today's connected world. This is where the important of proper life cycle management comes to the picture. So what's the life cycle of an API? As of other assets like services, the life cycle of an API means an agile process for managing the life of an API from its creation time to retirement. Basically, an API will have different stages from its design time to deployment time uh, where it, the API will discover through portal and then manage multiple versions and deprecate once the API is old enough and terminate the API functionality totally once no consumers using it. So why do the IT industry think that uh, API lifecycle management is important? To understand this better, let's consider the uh, users uh, on each side of an API, the consumers and the API providers. As an API consumer, say a client application developer, you will have concerns such as, can version updates to the API will break my application? Is my API provider will meet the promised service level agreement? Is the API provider applying uh, advocate resources to power the API reliability? Whereas an API provider, say uh, the API product manager, may have concerns about is the API exposed usefully and uh, something that will be adopt adopted as expected? Or are we meeting our organization's standards in terms of API quality? Oh, what is our API versioning strategy? When do we retire our APIs? How do we uh, make sure we understand the impact of changes before making them? And uh, it's where the API lifecycle management help uh, both the parties to address uh, the concerns which I mentioned previously. Without addressing the API lifecycle, API providers will have problems of attracting developers to adapt their APIs. In other words, API lifecycle management is critical to implement a successful API strategy. It increases reliability, stability, and the availability of an API and enables effective collaboration between business developers and IT operations. WSO2 API Manager is a complete 100% open source solution for designing, publishing, and uh, managing a developer community and for scalability uh, routing API traffic. From a recent research in IT industry, when the audience was asked like which capabilities do you see as most critical for an API management solution, the responses were, uh, were in three categories. What they basically ex expecting in the API management solution is a API portal to discover the APIs and a API gateway to handle the runtime and API lifecycle management to govern the API such that uh, WSO2 API manager have those fundamental and important capabilities. Uh, the API lifecycle management through API publisher web app, the portal view to discover APIs from API store component, and to handle API runtime traffic with gateway and API key management components. WSO2 API manager leverages proven production ready integration, security, and governance components from our own products like WSO2 Enterprise Service Bus, Identity Server, and Governance Registry. 
basically uh, WSO2 API manager handles both the collaboration time of API creators and API consumers. Uh, in, uh, in the API publishing time, they do have their own life cycle and for uh, AP, app, uh, app developers, API consumers, they do have their own life cycle as well. So uh, WSO2 API manager covers both those parties and also the runtime will also handle through gateway and key management server. Additionally, it provides monitoring support for these uh, API access. So uh, this is the visual view of uh, WSO2 API Manager default lifecycle. Uh, basically it has uh, six uh, lifecycle stages such as created, prototyped, published, blocked, deprecated and retired. So uh, from each stages uh, uh, we have configured a state transition to uh, transfer from one stage to other. So if I explain uh, what what each these states means, when uh, when you when uh, API uh, provider access the API publisher and once he just at the API, it will be uh, in created state. In the created state, the API metadata. Uh, uh, will not uh, deployed in the API gateway and uh, it will not visible to subscribers in the API store. And when the API uh, state transition to prototype state, the API will be deployed uh, and published in the API store as a prototype API. The prototype state uh, usually is for mock implementation, uh, which made public uh, in order to get feedback about uh, uh, its usability. So in uh, API with uh, prototype state, users can invoke the API without subscri subscription because it's for mock implementation. And once, uh, once the API provider designed and implemented uh, the API properly, and apply the SLA uh, SLS properly. Uh, the next state is published state. So once the uh, API provider uh, change uh, the state to publish, that API is visible in the API store, and also it will deploy to API gateway runtime, and then it will be available for subscription, and to uh, it is ready to use by API runtime. And uh, say uh, uh, when, uh, when the API provider need to temporarily block the access to an API. So what he can do is he can change the API status to blocked. And uh, at this stage the runtime calls will be blocked and uh, the API will not be listed in API store. Uh, the deprecated state. When uh, uh, API is in deprecated state, new subscriptions will be disabled. But the API is still deployed in gateway and available at runtime for existing subscribers. Existing uh, app developers or subscribers can continue to use uh, the API as usual until that API state change to retire. The deprecated stage uh, for an API will important when a newer version of the same API introduced, uh, maybe due to some backend service changes. So then the uh, uh, um, then the older version uh, can be kept as deprecated only to use by uh, existing uh, subscribers. The last stage of an API is retired. So. Uh, 
uh, the retired state means that API will be unpublished from the API gateway and delete from the store and no one will use it more. So it's like the end of the API. So with the previous releases of API manager before 110 release which uh, which uh, introduced on this January, the API lifecycle is a pre-configured one such that the lifecycle states are static and those are not configurable. And the state, state transition execution process also predefined. Because of that, uh, an organization uh, which uses WSO2 API manager couldn't customize the API lifecycle uh, in API publisher to match with the environmental requirement. For example, there were requirements like uh, uh, some organization uh, need to change the uh, lifecycle states based on the environment name. And additionally, some organizations have requirement like uh, ability to plug a workflow approval process or a notification process on state transition events. So before 110 release out, uh, these uh, requirements cannot be fulfilled with our life cycle, uh, default life cycle management uh, features. So with uh, API Manager 110 release, uh, we have addressed these uh, uh, lacking points by integrating uh, WSO2 governance registry based lifecycle concept to our API manager. Now the API lifecycle is fully configurable and uh, it has written as a XML configuration file so uh, that uh, it can customize as the organization needs including the state transition execution flows. The most important thing is the API publisher UI also capable of uh, visualizing uh, such uh, custom API life cycles dynamically. So uh, now uh, it's time for the demo to show how API life cycle uh, customizations work uh, in WSO2 API Manager 110. So from this point onwards, uh, I'll hand over the presentation Chamila, my colleague, to proceed with. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Chamila Dikarnaga. I'm a software engineer at WSO2 and I'm a member of the API Manager team. So I'll do the demonstration related to this feature. So let's take a scenario where the default lifecycle states are not uh, enough for some uh, companies. For example, let's say uh, we want to uh, push our API before publishing it to a, before publishing it, we want to push it to a different environments. Let's say we want to push it to a QA environment, uh, a home and testing environment, such environment. So let's say, let's see how we can achieve this kind of scenario using this new like uh, lifecycle extension feature. So here is kind of, here's kind of overall in, uh, image of this scenario. So APM, so before publishing it, then after creating it, we'll uh, push that API to a uh, env external environment, a QA environment, kind of environment, another API managed environment. So I'll describe how we can uh, get this thing done using our feature. So there are two things we have to do for to accomplish this one. First, we have to design the life cycle uh, and then we have to create some executor to uh, handle this lifecycle event changes. So first I will go through the designing part. So this is what we have come up for the design for this lifecycle. So this is kind of like similar to the uh, previous default one, but uh, the new addition is that this QA environment, QA like uh, the new state, I have named it as QA. We can name it anything we want. This kind of highly configurable. So what we do is from the create state, the default one is from create state we go to the publish. If you just click this one, we go from create to publish. So in this one, the custom one, we have a new state to uh, publish that uh, API to a new external environment. So, so 
and I'll just this is kind of like overall picture about the life cycle. I'll just uh, show you how we can map this uh, life cycle state to a XML that API manager can understand. So I'll just okay. So before going to the this custom one, I'll just show you how we uh, configured the default life cycle uh, uh, to the XML file in our API manager. So this is the default one. So I'll just explain the configuration using this one first. So I have the uh, default XML file. So this one is uh, located in this uh, location. If you just go to the regist uh, carbon, sorry, uh, if you go to the uh, log into the management console and un under the extension, you will find this life cycle. So here we, we can uh, view the default the life cycle that comes in the API manager. So here this is the one that uh, we use for as a default one. So I'll just give it out there and so I'll just explain with about this life cycle some overall picture about how we can create uh, uh, how this is created there. So in the life cycle you will find some main uh, elements like state element. So this is what we define as the states in this life cycle. Like for example, there are five states created, prototype, public, those kind of states in the default life cycle. So that is what we define under the state element. So we have this, uh, we create, uh, put time, uh, we create that state element and define an ID. And then you can find these all six, the five states in this default one. And then what we need is the link between each state, like from create to publish we need one link and for, from create to prototype we need one link, those kind of uh, connection. So how we do this connection is like uh, introducing this element, transition element. So in this element we have provided the target element, target state and the event we need to, we need to, uh, the event that need to trigger this state change. For example, in, if you just take this create state, we know that uh, from this create state we can go to two states like a publish state and a prototype state and those are uh, defined in here. So as you, you can see for target state, prototype we have uh, event deployed as a prototype. That is what is uh, shown uh, in this uh, event in this uh, diagram as a deployed as a prototype. Those kind of things. So, so now we know we have state and how it is connected. Then the other part is the data model, which is kind of like uh, they are to govern the transition. Kind of like a process, uh, if you want to do some processing, we can import some executable inside this model. Well, so there are a couple of uh, defined data types for this one. And for example, here transition execution is, uh, type is used to provide ex uh, executors to handle this transition from one state to other. For example, in, in our default one, we have this transition execution, uh, uh, executor, default executor, API executor added for, as a transition execution object here. So what it does is for uh, event such as a, if you want to create um, state transition from create to prototype, we dep uh, we have, we uh, generate an event, deploy as a prototype and and we have provided an executor there to handle this event. In this executor, you will see that for this event deploy as a prototype, we have a separate execution element. We have provided that event, uh, this deploy as a prototype, and provide the executor uh, to handle this event. So that is how we have implemented this. So for example, other for other state like for publisher, we have another executor. For for the default one, we have only single executor. In the, all these state transactions are handled inside this uh, executor. So you, you may think why we need this kind of executors inside. So for example, if we just state transit from create to uh, publish, we need to uh, say publish the configuration to a gateway, synapse you know, configuration. So those kind of things can be handled inside this Java, create Java client. Anything can be done inside this executor. So that's why we are using executor. So it is highly uh, configurable and we can just uh, add custom changes and do anything we want. So this is kind of like a basic introduction about this uh, uh, life cycle uh, configuration. So we can do complex uh, life cycle changes as well. For example, if we want to limit some life cycle changes based on user roles, we can do this. Those kind of things can be done as well. So those are kind of 
features coming from governance registry uh, features. So those thing, kind of things can be introduced to this lifecycle and make it a bit complex as well. So that is the basic uh, the default one. So for this scenario, we have introduced a new lifecycle uh, state. So I will just show how we did it. So this is the uh, one we created for this one. I, so we have introduced a new state here. I just name it as QA. So and from the create state, we have uh, link it link uh, put a link there, kind of like event there. So this is what we have put for it. Export to QA the event name, and the target will be this one. So and for this transition event, we have provided a custom executor. So we cannot use the default one because it is kind of like there to and the default like cycle states. For this one, I, what uh, we are doing is kind of pushing an API to an external one. So the implementation should be there. So I have created the custom executor there and passed some parameters. So we'll come to the executor later. So but I'll just show what we uh, how it is kind of like configured here. So in the create state, we have put a transition to the next state and put the execution uh, the API executor here to execute uh, to handle the execute uh, transition. So and in the QA state also I have added another state to publish state. So with that now once we are in the QA state we can either publish go uh, forward and publish it or we can just scroll back and go to the remote to the create state as well. So for that one I, as the demoting part I just have added another executor there to uh, delete the API from the uh, the environment. So I'll just go to the uh, execute code and explain a bit later. So this is kind of like a basic, uh, kind of like a, uh, uh, the, uh, the XML file we generated for this lifecycle design. Now to the executor part. That's kind of like uh, the, ha the code part we are handling this uh, lifecycle change. So what we want to do for uh, is to publish an API uh, get an API object from one environment to the other one. So uh, there are two methods we can use. One is to call the REST API publish in the API manager. So in one API manager one API manager one ten onwards there is a fully RESTful API and develop uh, publish for API publish and store. So I have provided the link as well. So if you just go to the this one REST API they have provided all the necessary APIs, REST APIs to Create an API, uh, delete, update, move some configuration documents, etc. So we can use create an executor in the API manager, and we can just use call this REST API to push one the API in the current environment to the other environment, like calling the REST API and publish it in there. Those kind those kind of things can be done. Another option is to use the API uh, import and export feature. That is also a, a, a feature that in API manager yeah, we can just bundle up uh, API from one environment and put, uh, import that one in the other environment. So it's another method. The the uh, one advantage of that import export feature is that we can move all the stuff like images, uh, custom sequences, any other stuff like uh, those kind of custom st stuff to the one environment or other. We cannot do that in uh, REST API, you can do that in REST API by, by calling couple of REST uh, APIs, but when creating an API, we, the, it only creates the API. So import export features kind of like uh, export everything from one environment to other. So from for this example, I will be using both uh, methods. The import export feature will be used to publish, push one API, API to the uh, QA environment and the REST API will be used to delete the API from the QA environment. So kind of like in, in, in our state, we have uh, from QA to QA, pushing to QA, we push the API using the export import tool. And to demote the, uh, from the QA environment to the create state, we, I use uh, the publish uh, REST API. So let's, uh, let's go to the uh, executor part. So from the this is a, uh, normally what we have to do when we creating an executor is to implement the execution in, uh, interface. This comes from governance registry modules. So once we uh, do the uh, implement this one, we have to implement two methods. The 
for an execute method and the init method. So init method is kind of like uh, we don't have to implement it, but uh, the execute method is the one we need to focus on. So this is where that uh, lifecycle change state change is managed. So it returns a boolean value, true or false, depending on that the external lifecycle state change will be happen. So once we do execution, we can return if it is kind of successful, we return the true, and then the lifecycle will be changed to the other thing. So that's kind of the basic structure of this executor. So what we have to do is uh, implement these methods and build the uh, jar file and put it into a component lib folder and import it to that XML. So import yes, import uh, as X, import the executor into the uh, state. So so I, I had described earlier I have developed two executors there here. One is to uh, ex export the API. So for that one, what I do is I normally I just get the information related to the API and call the uh, import uh, the, API, uh, the API provided for exp import and export feature. For example, if you just go to the documentation in that my uh, the tool, so it describes the what we need to uh, how we can do a REST call to export the API and import the API. So it provides the all the information related to this one. I just to piece uh, 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 test APIs and created a client, uh, Java client to handle this one and made it to the as an executor here. So you can see that I have created some HTTP clients, passed the necessary parameters like API name, versions and stuff and export it from local environment and then I just push it into the queue environment. So what the there's an init method I described earlier in as that we, we have can have to uh, there's a two methods I mentioned so init method we can if you want to like say um, import some configuration from lifecycle to a, this executor you can use this method so say if you want to push the URL username password and stuff we cannot we shouldn't hard code them in our executor so we can pass them in the lifecycle and that that will be taken as a map into this executor. So, so this is what where I have uh, configured some credentials and URLs. So here, as in the executor, we pass them as a parameters, and we can just import them here use in, in our code. So this is basically the import export tool. So similar kind of thing is done for the REST API as well. We implement the execute method, input, do the import. So in the REST API, we need to have a uh, auth application. The new REST API is handle the access is provided using auth tokens, not like in the basic code in the previous version. So for that one, so we have to create a client application, uh, auth application in uh, the queue environment to access the REST API. And I just import those credentials into the executor. So I have to just uh, here in these parameters, the client ID, client secrets last year and this I have used them to change the token and stuff in the executor. So what it just does is just get the information API ID. Here I'm using this REST API, the delete method. Uh, here in the REST API, here, uh, the <coughs> REST API, uh, yeah, it has, uh, uh, the API is kind of like, uh, we have to provide the API ID for the API and call the delete method. So that's how it is the, uh, the, the API is called. So we can get that point forward from this uh, documentation. So that's kind of another REST client, uh, client Java client to call this REST API. So those two executors are there. Um, I have imported them into this uh, as a couple, two executors. There uh, one uh, API, uh, two executors, custom executors here. One here and the, the one is here. So as, uh, I have now deployed these two uh, everything in our environment. So I just do a simple demo to show this one. So I have two environments. Uh, here, uh, I just uh, I have uh, set up a uh, set up two API managers. One in nine nine four four three port, and uh, the other one will be the one is running on the 
and 444. This is the Q environment and let's say this is the main environment. So I have created a sample API here. Just log in. I just created the API here and uh, I had uh, add all the necessary information like tiers, images, uh, every resources and stuff. So I haven't even I haven't published it yet. So uh, this in the create state. So if you just go to the life cycle Lifecycle, <coughs> I have. Uh, you will see that I have defined all these uh, uh, custom state here, the one related parameters and all the stuff are generated there. So now let's go to this lifecycle tab. This is the new feature we are. Uh, this is under the new fun coming from one API one ten onwards. We have this. Uh, this this, uh, this one is generated using based on this execute uh, lifecycle. For example, now we are in the create state. And I have said that uh, we have two, three uh, life cycle event, transition events for each different states. So publish, QA, uh, export to QA and deploy as a prototype. Those three will are shown in here. This is kind of like dynamically loaded. So once you create, change the, add the new life cycle event, uh, life cycle state and events, so it will be uh, shown in here. So I'll just uh, export here. So I said that. So normally, so now it is it will transfer to the QA state, the next state here, so, and it will it will show that two lifecycle events in, the, in this year. This is the main environment. So I'm I haven't I I have translated it from created to QA and just uh, you'll just see in the QA environment. So so now it, it is kind of like pub, uh, push that we have pushed that API to this other environment. So kind of like small uh, demonstration on what, ki what kind of things we can do. So I'll just demote it, call in the REST API and now it is in the creator state and now that API is deleted. So kind of like small introduction about what kind of things we can kind of like so we can just kind of implement like sending an email any kind of notification and those kind of things can be done using the text viewers and so a lot of uh, flexibility is there so if you come up with a scenario and we can just uh, implement it in different scenarios and that is supported from this new feature so that's kind of like uh, overall picture some introduction to this new api manager feature and lifecycle feature and i'll hand over to Laraji to continue <laughs> finalize the so uh, that's all for uh, today's session. So uh, so now it's time for questions. So if you have any questions, please put uh, the questions into chat so we can answer from our side. Okay, so uh, there are a few questions. So first one is like, uh, 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 is it possible? Uh, there's a question asking that uh, is it possible to change the life cycle of more than one API? I think uh, he's asking like a feature for bulk change from one time. So currently uh, it's not possible so with uh, how uh, WC2 API manager works is uh, uh, you uh, you have to change uh, per API basis the life cycle so if you if you want uh, this requirement in uh, your environment like uh, you can do a scripting uh, or to uh, and uh, each uh, API lifecycle change process as a bulk one. So the another question is, hi, is this uh, API publisher can generate any mock responses also? I think uh, he is referring the prototyped APIs. So uh, in uh, in the prototyped API state, uh, uh, from API publisher we do support. Uh, 
generate uh, inline uh, scripting responses. So if I go to So if I go to here, if you go to implementation tab, you can see prototype API section. So there are two types of implementing, either inline. So if you select inline uh, with uh, uh, JavaScript language, uh, you can define uh, uh, some mock responses to test this API. So, uh, apart from that, uh, uh, else you can add some mock endpoints if you do have. So, both the options we do support. Yeah, uh, another one is like, <laughs> uh, I have asked about the sample executed source code. So we are planning to write up, uh, uh, share this as soon as possible by uh, to a library document in the, uh, in, as a kind of like, we are planning to create a full document about the how to create this life cycle and all stuff and do a publish it in our uh, in our docs library site. And another question about, uh, there's a question about, uh, is it necessary to that all the API publishers share the same registry? Actually, we don't have to do that because uh, it is not like independent API managers from one API and we actually no need to share that register at all because uh, if you share that API registry then both or oh, every uh, API instance will have that registry uh, life cycle, uh, registry life cycle as well. So if we, I mean, uh, one, one, if we are not sharing that registry, we can have uh, each every, each API manager can have different life cycles. Like uh, the main one can have the uh, new life cycle with the QA state and stuff, and other uh, the QA environment life cycle can have the default life cycle. So once we, if we are not, we don't have to, if we are sharing this uh, registry spaces, then those will be shared as well. So we can, if you want to share it, you can share it, but if you're not, you can just uh, have it as an independent, kind of like separate API managers, doesn't matter. Yeah, so uh, there's another question, like is it possible to add uh, custom UI elements before transition is uh, executed. I think uh, here the custom is referring that uh, WS2 governance registry lifecycle specific custom UI elements. So for the moment uh, we do not support that uh, uh, that custom U adding custom UI elements. It's because uh, the 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 current uh, governance registry feature of adding custom UI elements is based on uh, JSP. Uh, uh, but uh, API publisher specific UI is based on jaggery framework. So uh, with uh, 110, we haven't incorporated that uh, custom UI element support for life cycles. And there is uh, another question like uh, capabilities are used from uh, ESV. Does this mean ESV need to be installed? No, it's like uh, uh, WSO2 API manages a solution which is uh, developed from uh, ESV uh, identity server and governance registry features. So the, uh, so the basic features uh, for mediation to, uh, which using API runtime uh, will be uh, Pack in API Manager binary pack by default. You don't need to install ESP related features specifically. We do uh, we do have uh, ESP features like REST API, 
most of the mediators uh, support. So you don't need to install ESP. But uh, the, uh, the thing which I need to highlight is like uh, if you do complex mediation processing, then uh, then uh, like uh, API packet pattern, uh, you have to use the external ESB and do the complex mediation through ESB because uh, API Manager contains subset of ESP features, not total uh, ESP features. And uh, there's another question like, will API Manager work seamlessly with another brand ESP? I think uh, the, here the user is asking like uh, whether we can plug uh, external API gateways instead of our uh, internal ESP one. But uh, this is a, this is an item that currently we do have discussions. Yet uh, uh, out of the out of the box, this is not supporting because uh, 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 the key manager component, our key manager component, uh, uh, is bind with uh, our gateway solution. So probably this this will address in our future releases in a proper way. So there is another question like uh, how how to manage conversions of messages in API Manager. So uh, it's uh, it's I think it's asking like REST to SOAP conversion type of thing. So uh, this is same as uh, ESB. So basically for both uh, ESB and API Manager, we uh, we do use same uh, core components to handle API runtime. Only thing is uh, uh, API manager use case is for managing uh, uh, API. It's like we have added uh, three layers uh, for managing APIs. First one is auth uh, to specific security layer, the throttling layer, and statistic layer. So uh, that's how uh, the API manager differentiate from ESB. ESP is a full uh, full uh, system which uh, which capable of handling comprehensive mediation transformation and API manager will suit uh, if you have if you have APIs that you want to expose in a managed way uh, and API manager consists that three layers to uh, provide uh, API in a well managed way. So I think uh, so uh, I think uh, we have covered all the questions raised by the webinar joining people. Uh, okay, okay. There is one another question. Okay, uh, there's question like uh, how uh, can can we show that how to design publish uh, an HTTP post? Uh, so so in this uh, API publisher view, uh, so we do have an API already created. So I'm going to edit mode, and you can see there are three separate views like design, implement, and manage. From design, uh, you can 
decide what are the API resources uh, which you need to extract from this API. And uh, you can uh, you can decide uh, to control accessing this API based on this API resources. And uh, uh, you can uh, uh, provide appropriate uh, uh, resource names, for example, here, test and add. And uh, you can go to implement stage and uh, either manage API or either prototype API, you can expose this. And from manage wizard, uh, for each each these HTTP verbs, you can add uh, policies, like you can add throttling with the, uh, how to control the request for this API resource, or you can add scopes as well. This uh, scope concept is like uh, for uh, control the accessing API resources based on user roles. So you can limit if you need to control the uh, this API resource access based on roles. And uh, you can additionally uh, control the uh, API resource access based on uh, token types as well. Either if you, want, don't, if you want just, if you don't want security, just you need to pass accessing this uh, post where without any uh, token, you can just set none or or this can be based on different uh, access token types. Uh, there are other two questions which is not much clear, like how it is different from API Gateway. I'm not sure what he's asking. So, uh, uh, best thing is uh, you can uh, you can uh, ask these questions from Stack Overflow, uh, and uh, definitely our engineers will answer them as soon as possible. And you can tag it in the as WSO2 aim or WSO2 and that will be easier for us to find that questions as well in Stack Overflow. Yeah, so I think that's all about questions. So as I uh, mentioned in uh, starting of this webinar, this is the second webinar planned for API management series on this year. So you can uh, you can access this WSO2.com events webinars uh, link and see the upcoming uh, webinars related to API Manager and other important our product. So hope uh, you have you have got uh, a better understanding of how uh, WSO2 API Manager handle uh, API lifecycle and uh, uh, the use cases of extending it. So, so that's it for the webinar. Thank you for joining with us. Thank you. Thanks.